Give him the forecast. <laughs> God <laughs> damn. Give him the I forecast. might get that tattooed on me. Give him the forecast. Oh! Oh, it turned to glass. Mm. She's so cool. So good. This music is so good, too. Yeah, the music it was great. This uh. is Doom. Ah! Oh my gosh. <laughs> and reclaim these relics of hate. Uh, glass tornado? Oh my gosh. This is so good. I'm stunned. Oh! And they're not even moving. They're no, like, they're yeah. Right. She got yeah, this is just a Tuesday. She That's what this. she do. No, oh. She's gone. Drop. Oh my god. Incredible. Incredible. There has to be people that worship her. Welcome back to the Break Room After Show for X-Men 97. Did you ever think you'd be hearing that iconic theme song again with new episodes? I sure didn't, and boy, am I happy to be wrong. I'm Brandon Barrick, and joining me today, she's the closest thing we have to a goddess walking on this earth. It's Jessica Clemens. To me, my X-Men. I don't think Storm says that. <laughs> she will, she will, she will. And do not make him let you down. It's Jay Washington. Hi, super villains everywhere. I believe in you. We're oh yeah. In this together. Oh mm -hmm. my, my guy Magneto. Oh boy, baby. Today we are talking about the first two episodes of X Men '97. To me, my X Men and Mutant Liberation begins. And what an incredible way to kick off this series. Man, it went hard. Uh, full spoiler warnings for both episodes ahead. Uh, but before we get to our episode discussions, uh, Jessica, kick us off with a little bit of recap of what we saw in these two oh episodes. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> right. If there's any doubt, the X-Men are back. Not only do we get the classic theme song, but the return of the characters from the 90s animated series, Cyclops, Jean Grey, Storm, Wolverine, Morph, Rogue, Beast, Gambit, Bishop, and of course, Jubilee! Jubilation Lee. Oh, Jubilation killing Lee. It, it. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous girls. God, the effects look good for her. <laughs> I, liked it. I liked it. The two episodes get us reacquainted with these characters. For us, it's been almost 30 years, but for them, the death of Professor Xavier was just a year ago. In episode one, the X-Men save Roberto da Costa, aka Sunspot, although he hasn't gotten that name yet, and the face-off against the anti-mutant friends of humanity group who are now using Sentinel Tech. Oh boy. The X-Men track down their source, Bolivar Trask, and another Master Mold, and an incredible action scene, the X-Men Crush the Sentinels and Master Mold. Special shout out to Storm's Omega Level Lightning Storm. Oh. First of all, when the Sentinels told you Omega Level threat, I, yeah. I was like, oh, we know they we know they levels that. We know they levels that. I said, gah. Say it again. <laughs> I, there was never a time I wanted to rewind something so bad in my life. Uh, I wanted to. I turning, the theater. turning the sand to glass, making it like a glass tornado. Walking in the desert uh, just was like, no, I know exactly. Yeah, yeah. I think the thing is too, there are Omega. A lot of people who are now getting familiar mm -hmm. with the comics know there are Omega Level mutants. Sure. Storm is one. Mm -hmm. Another one that a lot of people keep forgetting, they're like, he can't be one, is Iceman. Iceman's one. Yeah. Magneto is one. Mm -hmm. uh, who are some of the other? Jean Grey is because Professor Seven X man. is not Omega level. He, he sure isn't, but it's Jean Omega Grey. Omega level means that you are the best at your ability. And so your like, best, the best talent the power is, is limited. Not is there a way for you to figure out that eventually there is someone else that it could be Pudge? I, mean, I, I think it's like the Dennis, Fra the Franklin, Dennis World Franklin Richards, but that's, yeah. you know, Reed Richard's son. Yeah, because I was like, it makes sense that Storm's Omega level because it's like no one else has those abilities. No yeah. one else can touch, which not even just, there's some people who can control some of the elements. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not all of them. Right, she yeah. can control all of them. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, look, Rogue Arcade, she diamond cutter to Sentinel. That's all I know. <laughs> Roll gave a Sentinel a diamond cutter, okay? Oh my God, the that wrestling was, that was in yeah, this yeah. episode was insane. You go, and then we can talk about it. Yeah, we can. But episode one left us with a huge cliffhanger. Xavier has left everything to Magneto. But you all knew that if you saw the trailer. That was a good call. Him. That was a good call. Here's the thing. I, I have an issue about that real quick. Mm -hmm. Out of all the people, you gonna leave the Blackbird Cerebro <laughs> This big ass mansion and a bunch of random money too. It's the dude that was like, Charles, I'll kill them all. But you know what? I'm still good with you. I mean, it worked though. It was his best, biggest weakness was like the compassion that uh, Xavier had and like knew that was still alive inside of Eric. I think that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's how like you kill Voldemort. It's love, baby. That's fair. But Voldemort never changed to be good. Yeah, he got fucking it. killed. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about episode two. In episode two, Magneto becomes the subject of every woman's horny fan fiction. Oh, that stars doing God. good deeds. See? 
saving humans, and he moves the Morlocks from Je from underground to Genosha. Remember yeah. Genosha? That's the thing. Still, <laughs> I, I guess he hasn't read modern comics about Genosha. <laughs> like, hey, bro, you might not want to, <laughs> might not want to send them there. But he's, you know, he out here in his whole spandex latex outfit. Him leaning against that desk and that was, hey. it was so. <laughs> it, was, it was so good. He said, was so bitchy at times. He was like, "You I got a, you got a problem with it." Well, I always forget too that his cape looks like the scarf, but also he has up to here gloves. And I yeah. went, "The M, I went, the big M." Why am I the trying hair, to the have M's sex M's with him? See, also see what? Him to yell at me. I said this on Twitter. Every woman I know, and I tagged a couple people and a couple dudes, y'all all but all of a sudden like, you know, there's something about Magnus and his magnetism. I just mag oh my magnetism, my his magnetism. magnetism. <laughs> All right, but <laughs> but Magnus is tested as the new leader of the X-Men. Yes, he does acquiesce the position from Scott, which Scott is like, ain't nothing about a bitch. Because <laughs> you know we got upset. Yeah, and all he the, was all crying. He was, he was like, hey, hold on, fam. He was allowed to be. He was allowed to be. He's I'm not ready. ready. He's not ready to he be. He isn't, but he's allowed to be. But, but shout out to uh, Magneto kept being like, uh, ain't y'all supposed to be leaving? Yeah. Y'all supposed to be going. Y'all yeah. said y'all was going. So, I mean, what, what, what you want from me? Yeah. Got a point. You're trying to have a baby. You're trying, you're trying to have a baby. You want a family. Your girl, like, you got to yeah. go. What y'all do? You want to go place where the, the housing market's a little cheaper. And buy I'm some saying, and it ain't an upstate New York, yeah. for sure. Now, although the X-Men rightfully don't trust him, it's the humans that really do the testing, mm -hmm. ultimately arresting him at the mansion, by the way, and having him stay, which, let me tell you something. Y'all came, I need the UN and all these sore forces to understand. I don't give a damn how much plastic you bring. The dude has told people repeatedly, yeah. magnetism and electricity go hand mm -hmm. in hand. Buddy is like, hey, bro, you think, you, okay, them guns, okay. You got helicopters over here. Uh, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with this. But to turn this into a food processor on this lawn, oh, come one step close. That was so bad. <laughs> that scene was so amazing. But I also was like, yeah, you guys are dumb for bringing your vehicles. But yeah. also, you're outside. There's a lot of metal out here anyway. They all have iron in their butt. Yeah. I mean, all I can think about the helicopters are like the pilots inside. <laughs> Oh, I can't control it. Oh shit! Oh, oh shit! What's this? Oh, no, my man, work metal. My equilibrium is off. Help me, Jesus. Anyway, I, so, will, I will defend though. I mean, Magneto's done some bad things. I deserve this. But trial. he did stand trial at the UN. Now here's the thing, real quick. While defending himself, the anti mutant protesters and a human named the Executioner, mm -hmm. who we saw earlier mm -hmm. as a member of the Friends Humanity, yeah. stormed the building. They also they said the word. They said the big I word. Insurrection. Yes, they did. They did. They said insurrect. <laughs> so here's, here's the thing. I want y'all to make sure before I say this part real quick. There's going to be a lot of people in the comments and all over social media be like, oh my God, they're trying to be so woke. They, I need you to shut the hell up and go watch the original X-Men. Yeah. Because the Friends of Humanity, all of this is the exact same mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. This nothing has changed. It's just your bitch ass this has changed. <laughs> now. <laughs> The X-Men are there to protect Magneto, but right before Wolverine can go to jump in action, Jean Grey goes into labor. And tell me why she was like, well, Logan, we need to go. And, and she's like, oh my God, Logan. And Wolverine goes, what is it, Apocalypse? Okay. Why at the house? Why at the house? <laughs> he comes around the corner, she's like, oh, he's like, I got it. Like, ah. And we don't need that type of C-section. Now, that was a good line, too. I'll he, give you a C-section. He's got a lot of quippy lines. He's quippy. But he's always that way. Yeah. Yeah. Now, it's a fight at the UN and a fight to get Gene some proper medical attention because, again, mm. just like in the original mm. episodes, the doctors are prejudiced against mutants. Mm. Mm. Now, Cyclops and Rogue assist with Gene, and with Rogue taking the doctor's abilities, deliver the baby, and the know-how, all that, and the rest of the X-Men defend Magneto. Then... We get what's arguably one of the most heartbreaking oh. moments. The execution of Liza for a shot for Magneto and Storm intercepts it and loses her powers. Mm -hmm. And we later learn, according to Beast, that it's permanent. While he was trying to break it down, like, Roro, listen, you know what I'm saying? We got to do more tests. Yeah. We can try to figure it She was like, hey, hey, stop all the bullshit. Tell me what it is. Yeah, she's, she's like, I'm too old for this shit, Beast. She's like, hey, Beast, I'm too old for this shit. I got a mohawk. Let me know. Uh, I got a mohawk. <laughs> let me know. I'm yeah. badass. So, there is no doubt in my mind that this was all staged by Magneto. Yeah, you yeah. think Magneto There's I, That shot, not, the, first, the first, like, tip was how long that shot was set up. Yeah. And I was like, you're telling me this man that notices everything didn't notice the barrel of a gun that's pointed at him. That There's was, no one in his way. And it's not, it, it was a metal gun. It's not yeah. a plastic gun. And I was like, right. yeah, no. And then he went, the reason he went to trial was he knew that the people there would be so mad at him, yeah. show up, protest, break in, make him, those people look like Magneto's animals. The genius. That he's like, look at you people. Yeah. You two people have turned into animals. And my people are now dead on the ground. The X-Men that have only used their awesome power to save you. Look at what you did to Storm. Charles, so if I'm I have like, to sacrifice 
sacrifice one of your yes. precious mutants to show my cause, I will. And when he goes up to space and that one teardrop falls, I uh. think it's serious because he's like, I don't want to hurt my people, yeah. but you, but I had to to prove a point. Yeah. Bro took the whole, let me tell you something about Magneto real quick. My man lifted the whole tribunal and the executioner, took these mods into the outer atmosphere, was like, I'm telling you, I can drop. Don't make me let you. Don't let me let you down. Don't let me let, let you, you down. Because he meant that in so many ways. Like, bro can just be like, yeah. He definitely practiced that speech. So, I I mean, it, you make a good point, Jessica. Like, he he's a very manipulative dude. Even, like, buttering up Storm right before that, right? Being like, she's a goddess that works on this earth. And she's like, thanks, Magneto. And I then just it's think, like, mm. I mean, to be fair, I haven't, I do not, I didn't watch the final fifth season. But I'm like, I think it's. Too easy for Magneto to just turn like that. Yeah. There has to be a little bit of like breakage. He mm -hmm. has to like reveal something. Uh, to go back real quick into the original series, mm -hmm. there is a line that says Magneto, the leader of the X Men, in when they go travel in time, when Bishop does all the time traveling, Magneto is at one point the leader of the X Men. That's fine, but I still think his agenda is still. Oh, like, no, no, his rooted. agenda is still the same. It's still rooted. No, but he bit. does lead the X Men at one point, and it is also the point where Wolverine and Storm are in a relationship. Mm hmm. And Storm has her mohawk. So, you know, just want to say these things have happened. Also, before we go to uh, Brandon, give you another part. Shouts out to Bishop's Barber in 1997. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Bishop got a dope little fade out here running. He ain't running around here with his S girl mullet no more. Shouts out to Bishop's I Barber. Love, I love Bishop in this. It's so fun. He's great. It's I'm, fun to see him. I am obsessed with it. I, the, the, I, maybe it's just me. I was like, I, I'm now looking at them in this series and I was like, it feels like they are given more to work with, like yeah. Morph especially, where I'm like, oh yeah, I'm seeing more of Morph. As like a person, maybe I don't know. Maybe I'm just yeah, not paying I mean, attention. You, so I'm you, like, I love Morph. I like what they're doing with that character, Jay. You mentioned like Bishop's hair. Like all the hair is great. Like Magneto's hair is so good. It's so Jean's it's hair a, is it's great. A great like, hair commercials. They they they're what got that. Using? Oh, it's future. It's future. <laughs> they have they have '90s style to the animation. It's very 2D, which is like a lot of fun. But they're able to use a little modern technology to have like a little more definition and yes. like the hair and stuff. It's very fun. Really very this. fluid. 90s hair, 90s style, but he's from the fucking future. What is he doing? Who, Bishop? Yeah. Hey, hey, 90s Bishop. style is back now. It's back it's now, so. shit. Yo, That's true. We think about how many people we see out here in yeah. overalls again. You're right. Yeah, there's cargo pants everywhere now. <laughs> We're going to dive more into what we think uh, is up next for Storm, but to wrap up the recap, like Jay said, Magneto takes the executioner and the UN judges into space, and when it seems like he might just send them plummeting back to Earth, he cries and restrains himself. Oh my goodness. Ultimately deciding that he will continue to carry on Xavier's dream for a world where human and mutants can find coexistence. It's beautiful. It's he beautiful, goes, guys. Coexist. Ugh, he can't even barely He say hates say saying it. the oh, word. It's so good. Charles, you're a mastermind. It disturbs. <laughs> it, you're, I've never seen one word disturb somebody so much. And it's a word that's not, isn't, I'm, I'm not saying you, I'm not telling you to go like, fuck them. I'm just saying like. It's just like, go go like go go live go go together go. in Jesus. harmony. Oh. He's probably just tired of all those bumper stickers. <laughs> <laughs> he said, rip that off. He takes the bumper off. But instead of but instead of religious symbols, they're all mutant symbols. Like mutant Wait, it's just, it's that human has bent to, into bad positions. That has to exist, system. though. The bumper sticker yeah. that just says coexist, right? And then it's just mutant symbols. I'm not saying to make it. I'm, I'm saying, saying to make it. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny to see Magneto just. The off. Take this off of your vehicle. He is a good villain for that way. I'd be doing stupid shit like that. I'd be like, oh, that car's ugly. <laughs> Bumper. A Prius? Is that a, a Hummer? Yeah! Think about the environment. A wooden gun. I've been defeated. The new Fantastic Four. Terrible scene. Terrible yes, scene for Magneto. My guy Magneto gets done dirty huh. in the new Fantastic Four cartoon from the 1960s. Hey. Following the battle, Cyclops and Jean's kid is born. It's Nate Summers, ladies and gentlemen. He's gonna have a great life. Uh, it's <laughs> no problems for that kid ever. Uh <laughs> <laughs> it's sad because the people that are watching the series or like new people watching this are probably like, oh, what oh, do you mean? What do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, look it up, kids. It's announced that there will be talks to accept Genosha into the UN. Storm leaves without saying goodbye in a devastating letter that is just beautiful. Uh, oh, row, row. It, 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 it was really sad. Like uh, Jessica and I were at a, a screening. They showed it in a theater with like a ton of like 
X Men fans there and press and stuff like that, and like it was really moving. You know what's hard is that you dress up as Storm, yeah. and then you're watching that episode. You let me do my soapbox. Let Jay, me take do it up with someone else. I didn't run I, the event. Uh, I didn't run the event. I I was dressed up as Storm. Showed up there. I'm so excited. Uh, we're all excited. Yeah. When Storm shows up, I'm screaming for her name. When they say Omega level threat, I'm screaming yeah. when she shows up. And then she's the one that loses her mouth. Yeah. But she also, it kind of was, the hand was tipped on that when she had the discussion with Jean about the mm. baby. Yeah. Yeah. Because she said she thinks about it at times. But then, but it's like, yeah, about not wanting, uh, not wanting the baby to be a mutant. It's, right, very sad. It's the worst thing in writing. It had to be Storm because yeah. we all love Storm. It's and gonna be a good Storm. Storm is also the only one so far that isn't in a weird love triangle thing. Yeah, yeah. And so it's like, oh, this is the most sin, like the single, not even single, just like independent. She's kind of pseudo yeah. leader. She's better than Scott. She's and, way better. Than way Scott. better than Scott. And she's actually the one that kind of gets through to Magneto immediately. And I'm like, yeah, she. She had to be the one. Yeah. She had to be the second. And I know somebody's gonna be like, well, what about Rogue? Here's the thing about Rogue. Let me give you a little, little comic book history. I said comedic mind, comic <laughs> mind is thinking two different things. Rogue, you find out later in the comics, for those who have read it, shout out to the homie Corjandro, Hector Navar, we all have read this part. Rogue actually later on in life learns to control her powers. It's just that because it happened so sporadically, yeah. she never learned to control it. So she just thinks if you just touch me, it's done. She learns to control it where you can actually touch and she can get a pumps on the bump on. Shouts out to MC Hammer's 1994 video. All right, let's go. Uh, What's a pump on the bump bone? Pumps in the bump. I'm joking. Just got connected. Pumps in the bump. Storm leaves a uh, devastating letter left behind. Earrings on the bed. Oh, sad stuff. Uh, and then we get another huge cliffhanger. Jean Grey shows up at the front door, but Jean Grey is also in the living room. To Jean Grey. To Jean Grace? You comic heads know what's up. You guys know. You just had, we just had to give. I'm up. glad we gave Brandon that moment. I had to. <laughs> just I let Brandon have that you know moment. What's coming. <laughs> if you're writing the comics, you know what's coming. Uh, and lastly, what's going on with Magneto and Rogue? Huh? Getting a little close. Lots to talk about. Uh, we want to get into all of our big questions. Uh, and we've kind of talked about what we liked in this show so far. Are there any other favorite moments you want to bring up? I just want to shout out, like, I've really enjoyed these like monologues on the show, man. It's been really Ooh. good. Magneto's monologue, that letter from Storm, just devastating stuff. Like the dialogue uh, is is good. I think it's very accessible for like all ages. There's some cheesy stuff in there, sure. There's some great like '90s pastiche to it, but some really well written out things. Even when they go see Gyrick in prison and he gives his little speech. That the evil behind it, and like it really does sum up. You know, you it, it, it's a fun show, people with powers, lots of fun. But like, there's some heavy ideas there, and the idea that like there are a, a section of humanity that's like we're going extinct. Like you mutants are worried about being wiped out, but you're gonna be the future, and we know it unless we stop you. And like that idea of like I'm losing this. Like it's not they're not right, but like you can see their motivation. I think that's a lot more than a lot of animated shows, certainly in the past, got, was like good motivation for heroes and villains. At the end of Guy Ritchie's speech too, he says tolerance is- Extinction. Extinction, right? But we know the naked truth. Tolerance is extinction. Uh, and we know from the episode, that's like the title of the last three episodes. And just today, uh, as we're recording this, they, they put out like uh, episode descriptions uh, for uh, for all the episodes. And the last three are like very bad. They're like, mm, the X-Men face a big threat for all the last three. So they're gonna do some crazy stuff. It's gonna be big. I'm, I'm excited for it. So that's like one thing that really blew me away on this show. Hair and uh, all, all the, the really good dialogue I, and monologues. I, I love the fight, the fights. Oh, were, the also, fights. one thing that I, and I maybe it's just like blurred out of my mind, Cyclops moving himself with his laser. Yeah, the black Yo, my the ground. When he's fine. Yeah, when they were all, Yo. I was like, I didn't know he could do that. But then I was like, of course he can do that. I, did, but, I, I think they're probably, and that's probably something that they're exploring, unless yeah. he did do that. They're like, if this is true, what else is? Like, if I was a laser person falling from the sky too, it's like, yeah, I'm yeah. gonna just soften my blow. You by can definitely feel the writer being like, well, what if these two did this? Because yeah. technically his optic blast is a concussion blast. Yeah, it's it's like pure It's pure force. force. So, oh, so it, yeah. that, think about it, he yeah, blasts Yeah, because that people. is true, he's not like combusting. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's slicing through he's not, it's just a concussion. So basically he's taking the pressure out the fall. That's yeah. true, that's yeah. so true. When he blasts that little crater, when he, he comes out like Captain America, like, I don't know, he's it like, was, you're all great, great. <laughs> Yo, what is great? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you see Rogue grab Beast and yeah, grab yeah. Bishop. You see uh, Morph transform and grab Wolverine. Storm, you're like, all right, so. I literally said, who's going to say Scott? Who's going to say Scott? I was like, I was like, Scott's not ready to be a dad. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm out of this game. I like that I don't part. want this. Tell Gene I love her. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want this kid. <laughs> Responsibility. <laughs> I love that scene. It made me like Scott more. <laughs> He's but so good I think in this overall, show. and we already talked about it, so we don't have to get into yeah. it. Just the Omega level threat yeah. of Storm scene. I also. Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ. Was Storm, Storm had two big like moments in yeah. each episode, right? So good. I did love too when Scott, when they're like, you know, they're busting into the UN or whatever. And the way they cut it, he's like, he runs up, you know, they're coming to the doors and he runs up and he like goes like this, brrrr. And I was like, did he just blast, blast the entire people? And no, they're like, oh, he blasted the ground. Blast. I was like, the way they cut it, it made it look like for a second, he was like, I got this. He's like, I'm tired of these motherfuckers. Wait, I love it in the beginning when, uh, sorry to cut you off, Jess, when he no, was, when they were saving Roberto and the frenzy man <laughs> tied up and he, he was like, no, <laughs> please, <laughs> it's not my visor, please don't. Sigh, and open no. his eyes. <laughs> nah. I was like, bro. They're probably like, oh, he's, he doesn't he don't have his glass. He can't do nothing. Like, These mm. idiots. Read a book, Friends of Humanity. Jesus. You think on. they've done. Learn their they, power set. They said when the x are like roaches, when there's one, there's more. Yeah. Which means if you've been doing research, you would have notes. All right, this dude got blast from his eyes. <laughs> he has to push a finger on the button. That means there's something control there, right? right. He's a mutant. Which means this isn't like an external thing. So we gonna take this off and just let them sit there yeah. and look at us. What's your favorite part? Uh oh, the fact it's not even the action part. It's something I've been thinking this whole these whole two episodes. Representative Cooper is really mystique. Oh okay. Oh, oh I hadn't heard that yet. Wait. Yeah, because we haven't seen Mystique yet. Still working with. She's still, she's Mystique working with Magneto. And it still oh, okay. works into my theme. It still oh works okay. Because think about how she is. It's, it's just something about her. She can. She's in a position of power where she yeah. can communicate with the X Men. She can make things happen. Maybe, maybe Magnus doesn't know that that's Mystique. But I'm get. I'm like everything about her says that's Mystique. Okay. He has to know that would be Mystique. Yeah, everything together. It's not like she's doing too much. She, or like Mystique's doing the most. Yeah, yeah. she's so just doing like, enough to like. Yeah. Be. She's so, on the inside. Okay. Okay. Think about it. She's on the inside, which also helps. What was the last thing we said? Genosha being part mm -hmm. of the U. -E. Yeah, yeah. They want to get that through. That's Mystique. Yeah. Okay, I love this. I love all this. Man, this is a good show. Hey, folks. Before we get into all of our questions uh, about these two episodes, uh, we want to thank our sponsors today. Uh, sponsors like Mando. Hey, do you want to smell like a zero? Jessica, don't worry. For the record, zero is good, okay? In a clinical study, men who showered with soap and used Mando whole body deodorant on their armpits had an odor score of zero out of 10. After 12 hours, no odor for those, those men. Uh, men who showered with soap alone had an armpit odor score of eight out of 10 after 12 <laughs> hours. That's a lot more odor. Look at the math. Put Crunch the numbers. Eight is more than zero. Mando is clinically proven to control odor for 72 hours wherever you stink. Wherever you stink. We've been sticking to armpits, but it works on your feet, your nethers, anywhere you want to smell better, put a little Mando. Make the switch to Mando whole body deodorant and smell like a zero every day. Mando starter pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice, like mini body wash and deodorant wipes, plus free shipping. As a special offer for our audience, new customers get $5 off a Mando starter pack with code BREAKROOM at shopmando.com. That equates to over 40% off your starter pack when you visit shopmando.com dot com and use code break room and we also want to thank jelly bean planet easter is right around the corner and the only thing better than easter eggs are easter eggs filled with jelly beans which you can grab from our sponsor jelly bean planet they've got so many different containers like the eight ounce triangular box and the papa beans we love the little papa beans you get a little surprise jelly bean that pops up uh as well as uh you've seen these big jars jessica's got a big jar 42 and a half ounces <laughs> Everything the light touches yeah, is your everything the light touches, touches is your kingdom. Alive? He's alive! <laughs> oh yeah, imagine there are little bugs yeah, yeah, on yeah. the little logs and eat them yeah. like they're insects. Yeah, yeah, you can be Timon and Pumbaa and Simba yourself eating bugs that are actually jelly bean planet jelly beans. It's a lot of work you gotta do mentally. <laughs> we love eating uh, the jelly beans. They have natural flavors, plant-based colors, no GMO, no gelatine, no gluten, no palm oil. Go to our exclusive link below and use code 15NWROCKSTAR to get 15% off a 42 and a half ounce jar of jelly bean planet jelly beans today. 
And this is the 42. This is the 42. We've eaten half of it. Although, so now it's, it's, you see the jar is missing most of the white ones, it's because I'm yeah, eating them. She loves those ones. It's yeah. the coconut, coconut one. She likes the coconut one. So what you trying to say? Why you only eat the all white right, ones? All right, all right. Because the black right, ones are licorice and you know those are the worst. I got one more to do. But if it's a if it's a blueberry or a black bear, I'm, not, I'm on top of it. And of course, be sure to check out nerdriot.shop. Grab in some merch is the best way to support the channel. And there are tons of great designs there. Uh, Jessica's wearing our Xavier Institute shirt. I'm strong. That's right. Come on. Be a part of the Xavier Institute. Fight against these humans. Come on, do something. Stand up for yourself. Kill the humans. <laughs> well, we don't kill the humans. Okay. Sorry, my bad. We just we, we just want our own island to live on where our powers can be used. Uh, check it all out. That's nerdriot.shop. Great way to support the channel. Okay, I want to talk more about this show. I want to talk more about this shirt. Okay, let's talk about it. The this. shirt is very lightweight. It's very <laughs> nice. I love this. The, these yeah. crop tops are actually genuinely, I'm not, uh, I don't lie to you guys. Yeah, the, the public hates it when I wear a crop top, but I do it anyway. I can handle your midriff. Thank you. Thank I you, Jane. I think you have a lovely thank, midriff. Thank you. You've never seen my midriff. I <laughs> Okay, first up, uh, <laughs> pop that bug off. I think the biggest question I certainly have coming out of this episode is what's up with Charles Xavier? Is he dead, dead, just gone dead? At the end of the animated series in the 90s, uh, it ends with like Xavier, he's gravely injured. He has been shot, uh, but he leaves for the Shi'ar Empire. He goes to space, basically, to get some treatment. Although it's established that he has to stay there in space to get his treatment. So like, if he's not like, he's not capital D dead, why is Magneto like Xavier left everything to me in his last will and testament? It's mine now. I mean, we saw a death certificate, right? Insurance fraud. Insurance fraud. Insurance fraud. <laughs> Yeah, because they need the, I guess they, do they need the money? Well, like Xavier bad, has right? a lot of money, yeah. right? His family has money. Uh, there is money involved. And the government likes the X-Men. They're like, oh yeah, you're kind of and putting a, your own away. So because, like, <laughs> he has a school, so technically yeah. he gets money. So he doesn't need the insurance, uh, even if it was a bit. But I was going to ask, is there any other times in like the comic books that Xavier had to like fake disappear or run away? Yeah, I mean, he's come and gone. I'm trying to think of like great examples of it, but like- I can't think of it. You know, during this- He's usually there, but like, most of the time. Yeah, during this more recent run of like Krakoa, right? Mutants could be reborn, but he was killed again and like he got reborn again, but like- he, he got, you know, they, they've done every storyline well, there. But I guess then why would he need to pretend to be dead for this? I mean, this way he can go live his life off with Landra because he can't get Mora because Mora out here getting a woo! And, or, that, with Banshee. So, wait, say one more time. A woo! <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. Stop. 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 Well, Stop. So I, <laughs> you needed like Rick James and that's what really yeah, got me. That's why that got me. But uh, do you think he could be working, would he be working with Magneto so Magneto even knows like he's alive and they're just working together? Yeah, I mean, it is kind of weird because the X-Men and like, they're all acting like he's gone forever, right? Yeah. And maybe that's kind of the situation. They, in their minds, it's like he can't come back. Wherever he's got, we just have to like move on. So we can't just sit around and wait. They have to. They have to address it to the public. They can't just lie to the public and you know Kate Middleton the situation and be like, <laughs> he's still alive. He's in here. Don't worry about it. Because uh, they they had used Morph to kind of walk around as yeah. Professor X, but like that's not going to work forever. First of all, he can't just walk around. Look, Xavier started walking around. Everybody was like, hey. And in yeah. the, the, the first episode, as soon as he came walking in, I was like. Yeah, where's that big ass Zamboni you have? Where, where's <laughs> that? That, that the Zamboni? That chair is rad as hell, dude. I want that. The Zamboni. Zamboni. Uh, but yeah, he because he is like the public face too of like the yes. mutant movement, the good side of the mutant yeah. movement. Here's, here's the problem. So they have to like address it, and like his death, right? They point this out on the show. His death spurs a lot of sympathy for of the course. X Men uh, oh. and, and the mutants. But here's the problem with him working like, with Magneto, though, like. If he, let's say, let's just go off and mm -hmm. say they planned this together, yeah. right? Yeah. Magneto is like, well, listen, Charles, if I do this, I'm going to do a lot. Yes. Because if they plan this, he has to be, Mag he knows Magneto's going to go off the deep end. There's never going to be a just straight line, mm -hmm. this happens. Because all it takes is, even if Magneto say, I'm going to go to straight line, all it takes is one human to do one little thing. He snaps. This is this is Ric Flair, right? Telling the heartbreak kid Shawn Michaels, like, I want you to fight me in my retirement match. And Shawn Michaels being like, if you want the heartbreak kid, you're gonna get, get it. the heartbreak and kid. And I'm not gonna be your friend anymore. Yep. I think Magneto, so this is this is Magneto being like, if you're gonna put me in charge, you for that break. you know what? Uh, that, I appreciate you. That match right. makes me cry every time. Uh, I love I'm you. Sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, um, I, but if, if if it is like a plan, they're working together, and Magneto's like, if you want me to do this, Charles, I'm gonna do it my way. And Charles has to be like, look, I'm in space. Don't worry about it. What do you think? I, it's 
It feels too reckless, but I do under the only part that I think we do have leverage on is knowing that Magneto does respect Charles. Right. Like he could lie and trick a million other people, but I think for Charles, he's like, yeah. God, this was his one thing. Mm -hmm. Like he wished this, and I have to abide by it because it's an old friend, and I'm going to do it. But I'm gonna hate doing it. Yeah, he wanted so. that kid to die on the Ferris wheel, but he's like, mm, this is for Charles. So I'm gonna kill his kid. He's a human. Don't matter to me. Sure to keep up. Because to him, the loss of human life doesn't mean anything. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out if it's like an X-Men thing, or not X-Men, it is X-Men. If it's more of like a Watchmen thing where it's like we need a common enemy mm. to prevail. But then I'm like, I don't think Xavier would do something like that. Yeah. But it's like when you're putting your friend that wants the entire human race to die, and even if they change their motive, it's like still deep down inside, they're like, our people are superior. Yeah. Yes. How did you think this was gonna go? In what way? I think we'll see Xavier. Yeah. But I think we'll see a vision of Xavier. You don't think Xavier will be back by the end of this season. No, I don't think you can. Ooh, I, I, I think like last episode, it's Xavier rolling out. We should bet on it. Cause Ooh, I kind of, I low key want to bet that he is just dead. And I'm betting he's oh, dead, dead. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. He's he's dead. He but you, they that's what I'm saying. You see like a vision of him or something mm. or last message he left. Okay. I think he's gone. I think he's gone. And I think those flashbacks are what makes him more important. Like, yes. We, we could learn later that like, you know, the X-Men got a message from the Shi'ar Empire that was like, sorry, we couldn't do anything. Like, and unfortunately, he passed. I think he will be back by the end of the season. I think he, I'm gonna bet that he's I'm betting dead. he's dead, dead. I don't know. I mean, well, because I think, what- hey, I'm just saying, me and, me and, right. me and, me and Jay. But here's the problem though. Like, if he's not, mm -hmm. if Xavier is not dead, this would damn near damage all the credibility he has. Again, the yeah. death certificate just came in. Right, but he has to be in the in, you know, in the the world of human law. You know, he has he has to be certified dead so that they can all move on and keep going with their plans. But he was the plans and everything would go on regardless, right? Whether he was alive or dead. Yeah. Him being if he comes if he's Tupac Shakur in real mm -hmm. life and he comes back. Everything that's happened afterwards, the mutant sympathy, right? It Could goes it, away. Yeah, that's a good point, because his death did more to help their cause than and, anything, right? It, and it feels weird because it's like it's been thirty years almost, and it's like, hey, where's Xavier? But it's like he was here in the, the original yeah. animated. That was where his time was spent. He's just not gonna be here. Yeah, I, I, I wonder if like maybe he won't come back to Earth, but like, hey, he's on Asteroid M. You we can go know. visit him whenever we want, but. <laughs> As far as Earth knows, he's dead forever. You hold out as long as you want. I will, Ooh. I hold out. Or, or, mm -hmm. hear me out, mm -hmm. hear me out, mm -hmm. Marvel Studios is killing Charles Xavier in every universe, Ooh. except the one we gonna need him in. Okay. The Nexus Charles. He's dead in the Multiverse of Madness universe. That was yeah. the only one I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> McAvoy's the one is gonna be gone. Yeah. yeah. This one is gone. He's eliminating Charles Xavier's okay. to, Fighting them is pro are probably eliminate, eliminate Charles Xavier's till we have the one that's in the universe where Monica is at at the end of the Marvels. Okay. Side 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 note, but also question: Do we know how like loosely this is tied to Marvel? The creators of the show have talked about it, and they've said that like this is totally separate from oh, MCU. It's was, not canon. Yeah. It is like in its own thing. Now that could just be them like they kind of sowing the seeds of doubt, okay. right? They could still kill him and it's still like, oh, well, Kyle right. Kyle and also, he's still dead and Yeah, and then you gotta remember, it, it just continues on the lineage of the X-Men cartoon. Yeah, this is With, their universe. This is their the 90s, universe. Basically. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah, I like I, and you know, they could be saying that just to throw us off the scent for what if they were like, hey, this this is all canon stuff and then they could come into our universe mm -hmm. if we wanted. We kind of saw with Captain Carter, a little bit, a different version of Captain Carter, but they, they've been pretty pretty staunch about like, this is separate. Now, the, we know there's already two seasons written and they're working on a third season. So it's like, if they're gonna keep it separate forever, they can do that because they could keep going or they're gonna make more and they're gonna tie in somehow. Yeah, and it doesn't, it, like I said, it doesn't have to. Yeah. And I know there are a lot of people watching this right now that are in the comments right at this point going, I don't want it to tie into the MCU. Right. It, do, it doesn't. I don't matter. think they're in any rush to do that. Yeah, they're not in a rush to do that. That's not. I think none of their animated shows, they're like, in a, when I say none of their animated, the yeah. new ones that are coming out. Yeah, none of those are, again, Eyes of Wakanda is a prequel. Is a prequel. Yeah, yeah. Is a prequel. And Spider-Man like freshman year is like Spider-Man freshman year. Right. That's it. So like, we could be cool. We'll be cool, we'll be cool. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about Storm. You know, again, tragic, really sad. Uh, you hate that it happens to this character. It's a wild way to start up the series with one of like the most iconic characters. And when she, anytime she was on screen in that theater, the crowd was high. Yeah. Like people have been waiting for this. 
she's been done dirty in so many movies, <laughs> right? Uh, you know, and then they took away her powers. Uh, and it makes for a really strong emotional start. Like I said, brought me to tears. Tough stuff. When she's like, she can't feel the wind anymore. And she's scared. Oh my God. That, she's like, no uh, moisture. I no, I can't feel the breeze. moisture. I can't uh, feel the breeze. Brutal stuff. I mean, she's totally going to get her powers back. We know that. They, they can't do this. It would be unhinged. But I'm still mad that I she clearly will not be in like four more episodes. No, well, yeah. Okay. So in the comics, the life death storyline, which we know uh, the upcoming episodes are titled, there's two of them with that title, uh, is when Storm loses her powers, but eventually regains them. And the episode premise. And the episode premises released do seem to indicate that she'll get them back at some point. I mean, they, there's no way this is like lightning oh. strikes her. Oh, okay. Oh, she like stands on top of a mountain. She maybe something happens in lightning strikes. Yeah, yeah. No, seriously. Uh, it just and it just and like acted. It act. It act she has to find a way to get the radiation off of her. And it's, it's after mutation. radiation out of her. I would like that because when she was like packing in the rain and she yeah. heard the thunder and got scared Ugh. from it because she can't control it. Brutal. Can you um, imagine it be raining? You like that? That not, not today. Yeah, not yeah. you can't stop. <laughs> it she probably anymore. just makes it. Yeah, by her window, she makes it sunshine. Yeah. Um, I hated that scene. And when I said earlier that I was like in writing, it had to happen. I meant more so like I hate that it had to happen. But like, yeah. we wouldn't have had that the much of impactful. emotional. Yeah. yeah. If it would have happened to Gambit, I would have been sad. If it would have yeah. happened to Wolverine, I also would have been sad. Gambit, I can't happened. charge up no more man no more. I can't uh, charge up these cars. <laughs> He's like rogue. Oh, what does he got? He's like, come help me. Mon cher. Mon cher, Mon cher. come help me get this shirt off. Brent Gambit just goes, he leaves the X-Men to open this, a Bengay factory. I got all this gumbo tucked up into my abdomens. <laughs> Making Bengays. Yeah, how's he got all those abs? Eating all, all the beignets. <laughs> eating all them beignets. Were they day. just eating beignets? That's not For healthy. breakfast. Uh, so what they do is they eat beignets, go to the danger room. Oh, okay. Oh, that's true. And they love yeah. that da goddamn danger room. I love the but, danger room. Um, they are addicted to the danger room. But that storm scene, it... It, it's, it it broke me. It, it, it was, was it was a little, I don't know why and maybe it's because I was like dressed up as Storm and I love a very strong black woman that is Storm mm. that I was like she's broken she's done and she's like old enough and so wise to be like don't bullshit me tell me the truth right right what's going on what do you know and Beast is like I can't figure it out I know what she's from. so this is what may happen in the next couple episodes again just just shooting at the moon Storm goes across the country to California, Southern California. She starts to reside in a neighborhood known as Silver Lake. Okay. She gets herself Why a Silver job Lake? because she can get a job as a barista. Okay, if she, be, Only she, got, the, she got the Only. hair for her. She barista. got the hair as a barista. 90 Silver Lake, very cheap. Right? Very cheap. Oh, sorry. 90 Silver Lake hair and 90 Silver Lake cheap. <laughs> yes, so she goes, she, becomes, she makes an amazing espresso. Yeah. All espressos and the lattes have little lightning bolts in them. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, line. she makes the lightning bolts. She makes lightning, lightning bolts. She makes clouds. She makes oh, them. but the, okay, keep going. The depth. And so she lives her life that way. And then somebody was like, yo, I think I saw a black chick that looked like Storm. <laughs> That's the thing. Yes, 100%. Yeah. That's the thing. Uh, she can't leave without people knowing. Yeah, she, 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 I was like, you guys, I think I changed a lot of things. You're clearly Storm. Like, she's like, I'm leaving to go be on my own. And I'm like, even when like she gave the bus where? driver the thing, I feel like the bus driver was like, is this fucking Storm? Is this Storm on my bus? I'd be like, holy shit, Storm's on my bus. Yeah, oh, how does she? Hey, bitch, ain't you want me flying? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't you fly? Can't you fly? Because if I was you, I would ride the clouds. I would be on the cloud. I would be on this stank ass bus. <laughs> That's crazy. That's that you are crazy. All the fumes of this stank ass bus. Yo, Yo I, the dude, you, the <laughs> seat, you can sit in the dude just pissing. <laughs> Put that part. Let me get on your back. Let me just get on you. Why are you on this bus? <laughs> Uh, yeah, and how quick do you think the world's gonna? Oh, well, they already know because it happened in front yeah, of all the saw, people. Yeah, and he and made the speech. Yeah, he he made that speech that she's gone. It also didn't help that she like crawled off the stage. Mm -hmm. Fell. I was like, oh girl, oh, come on, it was so come on, sad. stand up. So sad. Yeah, you want to stand, but she got hit it's in the shot. middle of the cleavage. Yeah. Yeah. Like Ugh. she got hit in the in the breastplate, yeah. like right here. It was like, oh, you can't walk. Hey, that probably knocked the wind about yeah, this. <laughs> I've been I've been kicked by a mule before. I don't know. Wait, what? Never been on a farm? Get kicked by a mule? No, 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 no I haven't. None of the people no. on the show have been on a farm. Don't watch out. That got kicked by a mule. Okay. I'm sorry, in Chicago, does a mule Ain't no come damn, on you? At the zoo, and I'm not even getting back. <laughs> Maybe at a zoo. Yeah. Some of us have lived wild lives out there. Uh, with wild life, clearly. <laughs> let's, let's talk about the two genes, plus what's up with her vision from episode one, right? Remember when she was oh, yeah, trying to break into Geiger's mind and was like, I'm in your head. And he's like, ah! That was great. I love that. <laughs> that was a great moment. Uh, but when she was doing that, right, she she was in control, and then like something happened, and then she had this like vision of the future. Yeah. You know, we saw like a master mold, but it had like a skull face with like teeth. Uh, she saw like a graveyard and like a big explosion. Her baby, all of that, right? Is this just like master mold? 
gaining like sentience and able to like hack into her head? Is this like remnants of the Phoenix Force? Is this something else entirely? One dude. Hmm. One dude. Okay. Apocalypse. Oh, apocalypse. Oh, all apocalypse? right. Remember, he's he, in the vision. I think he's. I think he's controlling some of. Okay. Uh -huh. Remember, apocalypse. Even in the old series, has used humans. Mm -hmm. He's the reason the virus happens. The techno virus. Yeah, yeah. mm -hmm. The apocalypse has used humans for different things. He's used the friends of humanity. So it would not be surprised when knowing about Trask and all these things, trying to eliminate mutants and trying to eliminate the X Men that Apocalypse has some level of play in it. Right. And then he knows Jean Grey is like going, seeking out in his brain. He's like, ah, da, 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 and put this brakes on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What if it's like, yes, could Master Mole is already sentient to an extent. Right. He's right. already self-aware. Yeah, they are, it is a living. Yeah, Master Mole is already self-aware. Yeah. He knows, he's like, yo, I will, when he's, first of all, when he stood up to fight, because he's yeah. never stood up to fight. He just sits his thick ass down and makes sentinels. Just shits out oh, sentinels. Like, come, on, come on, baby. Do, no. you, do you think, uh, so you think that in her vision, someone stopped her? Probably so. Yeah, I wonder, I like the idea that like Master Maul like put something in Geiger's head to like prevent Psychic interference, you know what I mean? Like nanobots or something was like that. Was Guy Rich the one that was the tornado in the vision? The tornado. There was a the like vision. a dust little storm. Oh, there, that hit her yeah, we were that watching said, like, I don't know who that, Yeah, I don't know who that was. It was like oh. it almost looked like Sandman, right? Well, this world it, says, it said something like not again yeah, or like, like not this time. Not or this like time that. Or Could even be the Shadow King. Right? Yeah, oh the Shadow King. Remember, I think we'll see a lot of people from the old X-Men thing. You know, again, two seasons already yeah. set, third one to come. I think we'll start seeing a lot of those characters. And one thing that the X-Men series was always great for was it was putting in a lot of Marvel Comics characters. Right. That you were like, wait, what? Yeah, very deep, deep back. Deep again, the executioner just came in. your Bridge is in an episode. Yeah. They, uh, I'm sorry to go back to no. Gene's vision because yeah. I got stopped on what you said. Because it was very interesting. Maybe it's like, I just don't know enough about Gene that in the vision, it was more of like a feeling of eeriness in mm -hmm. attacking that made her lead to like taking off the helmet to be like, what's gonna happen is bad, you have to stop him. Right. And I was like, okay, are her visions never that clear? And are they more about like that ominous and danger that she just knows something bad's gonna happen? But she doesn't usually have visions about the future necessarily. So I think that's what was weird about it. She usually, she's oh, looking okay. at someone's mind, what they're thinking. And then this was like, something took over and forced yeah. her to see this stuff. Okay, and it was in a giant explosion over a bunch of stuff? Yeah. Yeah, I, it looked like an atom, it looked like Judgment Day, right? Or she's holding her baby, there's like the flash. Or, theory two for me with that, maybe because Gene shows up. Yeah. Is remember Gene and both Gene and Madeline. We, that's Madeline Pryor. <laughs> spoiler, spoiler for the comic if people. Read the comics, if you read the comics, if you haven't read the comics, comics it's, her name's Madeline Pryor. They both have the abilities, so maybe because the other one was coming back, and it, it caused was like a, a psychic burst. Yeah, something like that. Do you think? Um, I, I also like that when you mention like you know what's happening because of the intro with Morph, and mm. when you see eyes, you see like Mister Sinister in it. Do you think that? That is also foreshadowing, like, uh, uh, not Mr. Sinister, but like, it is literally a graveyard, an explosion in the graveyard of a bunch of fucking tombstones. Right. Like, do you think that could be foreshadowing to like what Magneto's doing? Because in the intro credits, they have the X Men and they have Magneto's team, yeah. but in the middle, they have like four other people that I can't point out. I gotta I watch this. Yeah, I think the Sentinels were on that side or mold or whatever that guy Master is. Mold? Master Mold. And so I'm like, do you think whoever else was in that team is the one that causes the explosion? I don't know. Because also there's going to be, that's possible because when you bring up the Sentinels, this is going a little bit deeper. There's another Sentinel that we saw in the old cartoon. His name is Nimrod. Mm -hmm. Nimrod's an advanced Sentinel. Yeah, yeah. Here's the problem with Nimrod. Nimrod realized, he's like, oh, I'm supposed to kill, them, get rid of mutants. But he realizes Oh, as long as humans are around, mutants will exist. Because remember, normal people give birth yeah, yeah. To, to mutants. mutants. Yeah. So he decides, I need to wipe out everybody. Yeah, yeah. The machines, their end game is usually like making a machine world where well, there's yeah. no more humans left. So there's so much, well. there's so much possibility yeah, yeah. of what's calamity and the, and the chaos and the damage and what, yeah. what can cause those Jesus. things. Christ. Also the fact that, yeah, I mean, if, if you've read the comics, 
the the two genes that happened in the 90s in the comics it does involve some characters that we're probably mm -hmm. gonna see on the show Nimrod. villains we know that are gonna be on this show that have already been announced like you said jay when morph in in the intro he had, sees the eyes yeah, the eyes and if you've seen the old cartoon uh morph was dies in the first episode but then later comes back in the series and you find out he's been with mr sinister and like been brainwashed and all that stuff. So I think all of that's gonna play into oh, each yeah. other. Uh, and that, to me, that vision of, of death, you know, Nathan, it involves like Nathan Summers becoming Cable and going to the future. And also like all the whole Days of Future Past stuff, which they Spoiler did in the alert. old. You just spoiled it. I mean, Nathan Summers, come on. They didn't know. They didn't know. It's his name. It's, his, it's in his name. They didn't know that. Uh, it's, it's just funny to me because I'm like, yeah, we all watch Marvel things. So mm. you know you know who Nathan Summers is. When also in the comics. Or you just like, know the Summers. You just know the, the yeah. Summers. When they established Genosha, it becomes like a big place for the mutants. But then bad stuff happens there and a lot of mutants get killed. So like I, it, it all could tie into that. I think it's it, part of it too is just like a lot of the end game for mutants is bad. Every timeline, it's like yeah. it always has a bad end game. But it's all yeah, because it's always going to be calamity. It's always going to be casualties on both sides, yeah, right? Yeah. There's going to be humans who are dying, just happen to be around mutants who are dying, just have, look. Leech, if, if anything happens to Leech no, in this Leech. series, you don't. Oh, you do nothing to Leech, okay? Let Leech just do this. When I was do? watching it with my roommate, they were like Leech, and I was like, get oh, that thing off. You shut up. You shut your face. <laughs> don't you disrespect <laughs> Leech. <laughs> Leech is the Rex blow of this show. Uh, so you really wanted to die here. <laughs> if you haven't watched Star Invincible Reach House. <laughs> Ooh, not Leech. Uh, not Leech. Not Leech. No, Leech. Leech don't hit Leech. Leech finally have a home. Uh -uh. Leech finally lose virginity. No. Even Leech, <laughs> Leech is now free. Is he the same as Dobby? Because it yeah. feels like it. Oh, Master, Master Magnus has given Leech a sock. Oh. <laughs> Uh, let's talk about old Eric Lencher and, and Rogue. Uh, what's happening between the two of them? When, I, when did this love thing happen? Was it, it? It wasn't in the animated. It was just like, oh, they worked together, but we didn't know like they took worked. off that glove. Yeah, it's clear, so clearly they were able to do something. Yeah, I think Magneto, I took it to be like Magneto, because we know he controls electricity and stuff, can like maybe create like a little barrier or something. There was like a little zap. Oh, that must have been the most ultimate more orgasm oh, ever. Or okay. do you think... <laughs> Yeah, because it's Magneto. <laughs> uh, yeah. Don't you but take this out, producer. These type of notes like, oh, this. Jessica, talk. talking about Magneto again. Oh, um, I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm here for it. <laughs> <laughs> this, show, this show, I mean, the old 90s show was very horny. This show is very horny. This show horny. is very horny. So many oh, shirtless mutants I, all the time. I Even think, when Magneto, uh, no, keep going. Sorry. No, when we find out what, what happened, Cause here's the thing, low key, I didn't want to feel sad for him, but when you watch Gambit just drop the card oh, and just like. Oh, so sad. <laughs> poor Gambit. Oh, poor Gambit, but it's okay. And it, uh, what I like about Gambit too, taking it, mm -hmm. is just being like, um, it's fine. It's fine, it'll be fine. Like, he's, <laughs> he's not really like as aggressive as Wolverine yeah. is clearly about like, Freaking Gene. Mag Magneto smells good. Does Gambit smell good? No. Yes. No. No. no Gambit smell like a swamp. Yeah. I think, I think he. I think he showers he's a lot. But he's gonna. He's gonna smell like it's gonna have a musk. That Gambit women, had a crop top. That he was wearing a little crop. Top. He always wear crop tops. Sometimes men have this musk that's like, oh my god. Mm, and that, that's Gambit. It's called pheromones. Well, Gambit's pheromones are probably. Mona me, I smell like one of them Nutrio dogs. Gonna crawl that in a ditch. Mona me. Look at Evan's face. Evan said, "Cut that shit out." Real quick. That was such an accent. Cut the camera's dead ass. Uh, I no, think it's some crawfish yet too fast. Because what, what's going to hurt is Gambit's going to approach Rogue about it. has got yeah. to. And going to be like, you let him do it. And Gambit been telling you he yeah. got a bunch of energy. But just to, a, Yeah, he's like, keep do you, touch me. Touch do me. You, Stop it. Do you think that um, he, you said eventually Rogue learns the control. Do you, do you think like that's going to be the re reveal with Magneto? He's going to be like, I haven't been doing anything. You have oh, been doing this yeah, the whole time. time. I just didn't tell you, but like you've been doing He's this. It's a space jam. Fine. There's nothing also, in that. That was just water. Yeah. Because yeah. I yes. Because as soon as he does also tell her that, then she's gonna go be with Gambit. So he's not telling her yet. Yeah. He's yeah. just like, why would I tell her? I will say I love how romantic it is, uh, or the love in the episodes. Mm -hmm. And maybe I just like didn't care for it in the animated series, or just like let it go over my yeah, head. Yeah, you have more nuance now. You've lived a life and you understand. Yeah, a yeah you know, you loved about love. Yeah, you've had love. But, learned. Well, I, what I'm about to say is not a good thing. Oh, uh, oh never mind that. <laughs> so sorry. Um, <laughs> I was. I'm so 
frustrated with everyone's love triangle that that's why I was like, oh, Ro uh, Storm is my escape. Uh -huh. Storm so far is the only person not involved in any of your guys. She's put in the fight yeah. first and put in her job first. You guys are all like skipping out of fights to be with each other, mm -hmm. fighting over this person, still being petty over freaking Jean Grey. Like, I was like, this is so annoying. And then when Storm lost her powers, I was like, <laughs> Great. Now I'm stuck with these people that don't understand love and are all chasing each other. Do you think they're going to make Wolverine babysit? Oh, maybe. They, maybe. I hope. I, the, I honestly, you know what? I don't give it. I don't care. Do whatever you guys want. <laughs> with the Gene Scott Wolverine triangle, I'm so tired yeah. of it. I, I, sometimes I'm always like, Scott, just fucking leave. <laughs> just, Scott, just go. Gene, it would like, be real Scott, uncomfortable to leave. He needs to get over He's it. not going to, though. That's why I'm like, Scott, honestly, just like. It's uncomfortable to me Leave thinking him. like, yo, I'm sleeping in a room and in the next room I just hear, uh, 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 shing, uh, uh, and he's, he's just going off. But it's to a picture of Gene because Wolverine is so yes. in love, which is uh, Wolverine is so in love with Gene Gray that it's just like it, it, it in any situation. Look, if this was normal life with an HR department, Wolverine mm -hmm. would have been fired. Right. Okay. Oh, 100%. Right. He'd have been fired. 100%. Because there's no way you can keep being, and you got Gene Gray. Logan, um, I'm with Scott. Like, and it's uh, it's insane that she has to even do that. She has leads, to, she she's a little leads a mom sometimes. I feel. I, like, I'm just like, like it's. A, I'm like, you know what? I'm tired of this, and that's why I was like, let me go look at more of Gambit, Rogue, <laughs> Storm, even Beast. Yeah, even Beast. I technically no one's in love with Beast, but Beast is also just so cartoony that I'm like, I, I got enough of these quips. <laughs> What if Beast look? What if Beast been out here beasting low key? He like, you know what? I'm gonna fix this little time travel bracelet, but I got this date off this chick I met off OnlyFans. I don't Only trust Fans. it. You know why I don't trust it? He's gonna like uh, do a diagnostic on my vagina, and I'm not gonna have it. <laughs> I'm not gonna have it. I have a doctor for that. I have a gynecologist for that. Okay, so each week here on the break room after show for X Men ninety seven, uh, we like to play a little game. We because this is Xavier's school for gifted youngsters. Who's the student of the week? Who who is the best this week in these two episodes? Who do you feel deserves the title of student? Are of the we week? choosing in like also like heroics or Anyone, just like in story? What whoever you think deserves to be student of the week this week? Anyone from the, you know, the show? You know who I'm gonna say? Who you gonna pick? I, technic, we all know it should be Storm. I knew that was but, it should be Storm. It, it should be Storm. Then my second runner up would be Scott. Yeah. I'll give it to Scott. Scott showed himself. I knew I knew Storm was gonna be great. I knew Storm was gonna be great. And watching Scott, I was like, mm -hmm. oh, this has changed my point of view on Scott. I was like, good for him. He's going. I like his I like his fighting technique. I understand why he's upset. He's trying. I like that. I like that. Okay, I would like to say, first of all, that I used to believe that um Cyclops was what I like to call a whole ho. Yeah. I they did him dirty a lot. They did, did him dirty, dirty a lot. lot. I never liked Scott. I never mm -hmm. cared too much for him and whatnot. He Same. whined a lot. Yeah. Same. And I watched yeah. these two episodes and I was like, damn it, this dude is that you just really got to give him credit. Like, yeah. you got to uh, upgrade. Yeah, he's an upgrade. Like, he's an upgraded version of Cy Cyclops. He's, yeah. he's still a leader. He's human. He can control his emotions. Mm -hmm. He like, yo, this is what I got to do. Look, he gave Magneto some coffee. He was like, poison, dark roast, bro. <laughs> take, <laughs> take, take this drink. Yeah, yeah. So I give it to Cyclops as well. Okay, okay. I like that. Uh, I know what you're thinking. Your boy loves Jubilee. It was great to see her. I think the animation was great when she was dancing and they made the little plasmoids. Loved it. Put her in a fight already, please. They better let my girl go off. She's not my student of the week this week. It's Magneto. I mean, Eric Lencher stepped up. He did the thing. I know he maybe did Storm dirty, but I loved oh, yeah. I loved him being a good guy. He's he's stepping up. You know, Charles really left him a big task. He doesn't want to do it. He doesn't want to coexist with these motherfucker homo, uh, motherfucking homo sapiens. Right? He doesn't want to do it. He's homo superior and he deserves to be on top of the world. Don't let him down. But uh, I think he killed it this week. I, I really liked what he did. He was awesome. He was just throwing that medal around. It's great. Love to see it. Great. Love to see it. Love the new outfit. Two, two too. Cyclopses, one. Two Cyclopses, also, one. Also, when he he's his his power level has upgraded too. The hair yeah. looks great too. Yeah, that's that's we'll have to wait and see if this show is willing. You know, now that Marvel owns so many characters, are we gonna see like anyone outside of the mutant world show up? You know, Spider Man's name is on a, the newspaper that flies by the screen. But will we see like a Spider-Man show up? Will we see uh, any yeah. of the Avengers? Did we ever? But did we ever see him? Or in like the a series? Fantastic Four show up? I think it's whoever we saw in the series, and maybe a few. Like we might see a. Re I can see the four. 
Mm -hmm. because then you would open up the door for Doom, Galactus, Silver sure, Surfer, sure. all these different entities. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. I mean, this show is great. I'm so hyped for it. Uh, I can't wait to see the rest of the season. I can't wait to talk about it with you guys. Uh, that's it for us today. Thanks for sticking with us. It was a long one, folks, but two episodes. It was great. Two episodes. Uh, yeah. Make sure to subscribe to the Break Room channel uh, on YouTube and give us a follow on Twitch. We do these videos live. Jay, where can they find you online? Mr. Jay Washington, M-R-J-A-Y. You should know how to spell Washington. Uh, check out the link in my bio on my IG page for my Netflix is a joke taping. Ooh. And you can help to support to that as well with the give send though. That's right. Jessica, do you want to promote? Anything? Yeah, you can so, follow so. me also at Mr. J Washington. And then That's great. Um, Twinsies. And then <laughs> <laughs> go into his comments and go, Jessica? Question mark? <laughs> <laughs> Jessica? Question mark? I love um, it. Go watch, uh, the, I'm doing the Monsterverse rewatch series That's right, right now. And then we're going to literally Godzilla X Kong is right around the corner. So we're all getting prepared together. Come monster out with me. That's right. We're ready for the new empire. And be sure to follow at BreakroomNR on Instagram, Twitter, X. And threads. We'll check you next time. Late as gay as to bye me. Bye. To me, my boys. Woo!